Okay, so let's listen. There's some rumors going around. There's a, a conversation buzzing around the boxing community, and it's time to address the elephant in the room. So let's talk about last week why I canceled my subscription to Showtime. Let's talk about it. Welcome to Tough Blood Boxing. I am locked in, and let's get ready to talk about it. All right, so listen, guys, what's good? Listen, man, uh, I want you to know with this video, my intention is not to get you to follow, excuse me, in my direction to cancel your subscription. If you enjoy the Showtime platform, especially uh, the movies or whatever, then I'm encouraging you to stick with it. Me, I'm not in the habit of wasting money. And the reason why I subscribe to Showtime, because I'm subscribed to a lot of apps. I'm, I'm a family man in here. We got Netflix, we got a whole bunch of apps, all right, for movies and everything like that. But specifically, since I love boxing and about maybe I would say a good 85% of what I watch on a daily basis, right, or listen to on a daily basis is boxing. Okay, I just love it. Whether I'm looking at old historical fights, documentaries, new fights, listening to different uh, channels in uh, the YTBC um, you know, it's just I love boxing. I really do my due diligence with this sport. I don't want it to go anywhere. But unfortunately, unless we don't unless we fix the promotional company issue quickly, boxing is going to continue to deteriorate. The UFC seems to have, you know, understood the assignment and their their platforms are growing all the time. While they may not be as big money fights as some of the boxing matches, I mean, you got to ask yourself, how many big money fights are really happening? You know, we get them every few years at this point. Now, again, I'm not trying to dissuade you, but what I want to do is stimulate the conversation, get in the comment section and let me know what you feel about what I'm saying. Now, out of all of the boxing that I watch, right, I watch Sotia, I watch, you know, a, a few boxing channels. I even look at the, the street boxing, to be honest with you, because I just love fighting, right? Or watching it. But this is the thing. The two, the three main channels that I subscribe to, right? Showtime Boxing, Dazzin, Top Rank, ESPN, of course. Now, being that boxing is one of the only sports I watch outside of bodybuilding, right? Um, which you really don't have to have a network to join for bodybuilding, but... I would have to say, out of all of them, the most bang I get for my money is ESPN. Right under that is The Zone. And the way I feel like I'm throwing a lot of money away is with Showtime's Showbox, right? And unfortunately, the PBC is under that banner. Now, the PBC has allegedly a lot of good fighters under their banner. If you go to their website, you can count about over 150 fighters. Unfortunately, we don't know most of who they are. I mean, we got maybe five, six, seven names tops that we really do uh, know from the PBC that get pushed really hard. And unfortunately, there's always going to be far more boxes than there are the boxes that we know about. And that just goes for every platform. But at least with ESPN, we can go back and watch any top ranked fight that he's ever promoted. You understand? At least we can watch it as many times as we want. At least they have a whole bunch of other sports and whatever you went to that you can watch, right? Uh, for the subscription, the monthly subscription fee. What I do with ESPN is I just buy the, the yearly subscription, okay? Showtime, I, I didn't buy the yearly subscription, right? Because for the money, I started to feel, I, initially I did. But then this year, I just started feeling like we wasn't getting the fights that we were supposed to get, right? So I did the monthly subscription so that way I can cancel any time. Now with the zone, their price went up. But this is the thing about the zone. I've really always liked the DAZN platform. Uh, I wasn't crazy about when they decided to switch over to PPV, but I understood why they had to do it. But still, for the price that they give you, you still get a whole lot of boxing. You get a whole lot of boxing. You can rewatch it. You know, I've, I've, I've watched spent many hours watching the zone. Okay. The zone is taking up many hours in my lives, like ESPN. And you know, Showbox, Showtime is really like their rewatch value is terrible. Like the fights that they do allow you to rewatch is really eh, right? And so the simple fact is this. I still wouldn't mind paying a monthly subscription fee as it's really not that high. But I don't care how little of amount of money it is. I don't like to just throw money away. As you can see, this graphic that I have for the thumbnail, it pretty much sums it up perfect. Allegedly, Showtime is supposed to be uh, getting cut by 
I mean, show the boxing program and Showtime. Showbox is supposed to be getting cut by Paramount. Now, as far as their budget and the money is concerned, Paramount has billions, okay? They are not going broke in the least. They are the parent company of the Showtime. The, uh, if this comes to the dollar bill, Paramount got it. They've produced blockbuster movies, and, and I'm telling you, they have the money. The problem is they no longer feel like they're getting a return on their investment from the boxing program, and I can understand why. The boxing platform for Showtime is absolutely horrible, and... Coupled with the PBC not giving the fans the fight that they want, or us having to wait four and five years for a fight that we want, it's just terrible. Now, when we do get decent fighters that fight each other, I feel like Showtime and the PBC has taken advantage of the pay-per-view model, right? Like, they, they, they're they putting fights on pay-per-view that have nothing on the line that really should be fights that you should get with your subscription. So I feel like, why am I paying a subscription? I don't use Showtime to watch the movies or anything like that, right? If I'm paying a subscription to see boxing, but yet the main fights that I want to see and all of the fighters that I like watching, if I have to pay extra pay-per-view anyway, right? Then what do I need Showtime for? If, the, if, if you have to pay pay-per-view for a fight, Right, and that's really on any platform. You don't have to be subscribed to any of those platforms to get that pay per view fight. So, my logic and thinking was when I canceled Showtime last uh, week, I was like, I'm just it came out of my account, right? Which means I still have it until November 9th, but I just felt like you know, once I saw it come out of my account, I kind of felt like I was getting stolen from. Now, granted, I did get to see the Mendoza Tim fight, I'm actually timed it of canceling my subscription for that. They're not really putting on any big main cards for free. Uh, I mean, for the t your subscription going forward, everything that seems to be of any value to me as a boxing fan is coming out on pay-per-view, and I just feel like I don't need Showtime, you know? Uh, they don't want to steal in the fights and everything like that, and, you know, when you love boxing, you're going to find a way to watch the fight anyway, but I'm not going to pay pay-per-view for fights that we should be getting with our subscription. Now, I'll pay pay-per-view for a championship fight, okay? I get that. I'll pay pay-per-view for unification matches and things like that. It's hell, I'll pay pay-per-view for something like a Devin Haney, Shakur Stevenson. But that would have even been championship boxing. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like the pay-per-view fights that we're getting now, and I don't know if I can put all the blame on a promotional company because it might just be the fact that all of the fighters want to be pay-per-view stars without building themselves up to that level yet. Honestly, I don't feel like Demetrius Andrade or David Benavidez have built themselves up to be pay-per-view stars yet. It used to be back in the days, it took you years and years and, and multiple and, and a bunch of fights to become a pay-per-view style. I mean, star, but now it just seems like fighters just want to be millionaires right off the rip. Like after their 14, 15 fight, they ready to go on pay-per-view. It's like, dude, you used to have to build yourself up to that and so that the, 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 the public will be behind you in your pay-per-view, right? So it's like you would take what the promotional company gave you, put on a fight, let them make a little bit of money. You made a little bit of money. I mean, this is a job that you chose to do, but everybody doesn't deserve to be rich in the sport because I prefer quality over quantity where's the quality right now i'm gladly going to support demetrius andrade and david benavidez because i feel that's a fantastic fight in my opinion i know they're going to charge about 85 dollars for it i don't think it's worth that there's nothing on the line but an interim you understand and so i feel like that should be more of a 60 dollar pay-per-view but when you got every pay-per-view coming out and we got to pay upwards of 80 something dollars i mean where's the compromise for the boxing fans when the fight has nothing on the line for instance david benavidez and Kate plant yeah it was a nice fight but i mean jesus christ there was nothing on the line for that fight like really right why why did that fight need to be on pay-per-view I feel like I got more value for, from watching Tim Zhu fight Mendoza than I got from David Benavidez versus Caleb Plant. That's just the truth of the matter, right? At least the undercard for, for Tim Zhu and um, Mendoza was pretty decent, right? And so, okay, look, I'll pay for a good undercard and, and, and a good main event, but I just feel like Showtime was getting away with just getting this money for free. I barely watched the channel, and the reason why that is is not because they haven't put on good fights in the past, but you just can't find those fights in the past, right? Why, like, you, the, the fights that they do have that you can rewatch is 
trash, to be honest with you. Like, it's not that the fight was trash, but why is that the only fights that I can rewatch, right? We just literally paid almost $90 for Canelo versus Jamel Charlo, and they already had that up on Showtime so people can rewatch it as much as they want with the subscription. So what was really the point of me paying a pay-per-view, right? So it's like, okay. At that point, I decided, listen, man, I'm no longer going to support the, pay, the, the Showtime pay-per-view. Hopefully, you know, all of the big names that they got is going to be, I mean, I'm going to support the pay-per-view for fights that I want, but I'm not going to support this subscription-based app. I, I can't do it. It's just throwing away $16. You know what I'm saying? For what? I don't even really watch it that way. At least with Daz and I got a variety of boxes I can look at. All of their fights from the past to now, you know, rewatch value. ESPN, the same thing. And the thing I like about ESPN is they give you really good fights for your your subscription. I keep saying prescription. Sorry if I say that. But for your subscription, they give you really good quality fights, right? And then the thing about it is if they do have a pay-per-view, they're willing to compromise on a price if they don't feel like the value is what it's supposed to be. They'll bring their price down to $60, $65 because they understand that more eyes and, and faithful fans appreciate that more than you just trying to cash grab $85, $90 for an event that we didn't even find worth it. You know, and so we start uh, getting a feel like you're taking advantage of us. Now, that's just why I canceled my subscription. Get in the comment section let you, do you think I'm being petty? You know, do you think that I'm not supporting the PBC fighters by canceling the subscription? I feel like all of the main PBC fighters that that's worth supporting that we get to really see, you understand, is, is on pay-per-view anyway. So, you know, if I decide that it's a quality fight, I can go that route. The other thing I wanted to talk about is allegedly show uh, Paramount is getting out of the business of boxing, right? With Showtime, through their company Showtime. And so the PBC may be looking for a new home. From what I understand, and it's all alleged because I don't have any hard facts. It's just going around uh, the social media, YTBC, and these are some of the things that are being spoken about by some of the bigger uh, channels, okay, more influential, uh, influential channels. From what I understand, the PBC is actually looking to take their talent elsewhere, right? And that's actually a good thing, but it may not be the greatest thing because I feel like, from what I understand, Eddie Hearn and uh, Dazen Orford, Al Heyman, a billion dollar budget. Now, we all know one thing about Eddie Hearn is Eddie Hearn knows how to get to the bag. Eddie Hearn can find the money to make the big fights happen. The other thing I love about Eddie Hearn is that if you fight under match room, you gonna fight. You gonna, it's almost like, it's like top rank. They not gonna babysit you. You gonna earn your star dumb. You gonna earn your check. They not gonna babysit you and put you in there with this fighter and that fighter. Once they pass the point of building you up and getting the fans familiar with you, it's like, okay, now it's time to put you in the fire and see what you're ready to do. You understand? Let's see if you can extinguish this fire. Let's see if you really about what, what, what you say you are when it comes to gaining fans and making star power. They're going to put you in a tough fight. And so from what I understand, PBC may have Amazon Prime as a willing platform. Uh, I heard something about Black Prime, I mean BLK Prime, but I don't really believe that they're going to do business with BLK Prime because that is still really a small platform, okay? And uh, I don't think Al Heyman, who's already has a known brand like the PBC, so etched into the, the mind of boxing and into the DNA of boxing that he's going to take it to a smaller platform. However, Amazon Prime, however new that they may be, I will tell you one thing. When it comes to buying sporting events, because I watch a lot of bodybuilding documentaries through Amazon Prime, they do produce quality work. I'm not going to lie about that. And they have endless money. Just like Eddie Hearn is able to find a bag, Jeff Bezos, we already know. You understand? He ain't got to find a bag. He is the bag. You understand? And just like the Saudis, he can afford to lose a billion dollars and still not even uh, just brush that off. Probably write it off in taxes or something. You understand? So he might be interested in getting more into sports and might use boxing as a way to dip his toe in the pool. You know what I'm saying? To test the waters out. Now, I feel like the best move for boxing fans, okay? But we got to remember, we're dealing with the PBC. They're not really thinking about the best move for the boxing fans, right? They're thinking about that moolah. And you can't blame them for that either, right? But I think that they're not going to go to a platform like The Zone because if PBC takes their talent to The Zone, that's going to force them to stop babysitting their talent. 
we all know that the zone, the match room, they make the fights. You understand? And the other thing about it is, I feel like the PBC, it would be good for boxing fans if they was to go to the zone because then we can get more of the world boxing, right? Not just the American boxes or the Mexican boxes. We can get the UK boxes, Jap you know, Japanese boxes over there. We can get some Aussie boxes, you know. It'll be more complete and they'll be able to compete with the world competition and not just fighting Joe Blow Snow from America that, you know, the fans is like, eh, okay, right? Then we can really get back into the fandom of boxing. But I feel like Al Heyman would play it safe and go more to Amazon Prime route so that way he won't have to really put his talent through the fire like that. He'll still be able to pick and choose the opponent's. Uh, still be able to milk the casuals for everything they can get. Because one thing we do know about the PBC, they're not here to cater to the real hardcore boxing fans. Linda Ellaby said it the most, okay? And I, and based on the relationship that Linda Ellaby has with uh, Eddie Hearn, they don't like each other. Even though Linda Ellaby really has no power at all, to be honest with you. When it comes to making decisions like that, he's he has no absolutely no power. Right? He's a, a spokesman of representation, you know, just a, a, a represent. I forgot, a representative, okay, uh, as far as being a spoke person, but that's the extent of his power. He ain't making no decisions, right? But then you got um, Eddie Hearn, who I do feel wants to make the big fights, is willing to put that money up behind the big fights. You take that talent, you take the talent and mix it up with the PBC, boxing can become alive again. We can, we can have... This, this worldwide boxing, right? And not just one-sided or one-sided upon. We can get UK fighting America, America fighting America, UK fighting UK. We can mix it up. Maybe the PBC will be encouraged to sign more fighters from across the world, right? But, you know, so that's what I had to say about the situation. I think that um, I'm glad kind of Showtime is getting out of boxing. From what I understand, it ain't going to be anytime soon, right? They still might have a year under the belt. Maybe Showtime will decide, the Paramount may decide, listen, we, we're just going to go ahead and give you another couple years, which I hope doesn't happen. I'm ready for the PBC, uh, those fighters, to move on and get better opportunities. They got a roster of over 150 fighters, and we barely know the rest of them. I feel like with the competition that Eddie Hearns, the matchroom, can present, those will be some good matchups that we can finally get some more stars instead of just the same old recycled people that we keep seeing over and over again. There's a lot of good fighters out there. We're not getting a chance to see them because people are scared to put the money behind them. So I feel like PBC merging with the zone would be a great move for boxing fans across the globe as a whole. Now, if PBC decides to take their um talent to Amazon Prime, who's really new to the boxing game, right? But you know, at one point, so was Dazzin, right? That doesn't mean they can't make it happen, right? But it's just, I just don't, that still gives, you know, the PBC a way to block other fighters out and, and not take this fight and not take that fight and then just create their own bubble like they did with Showtime. Anyway, that's all I want to talk about. I appreciate you for taking the time to check out the content. Get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about it. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the video. If you're new to the channel, I welcome you to become a tough guy or a tough girl. Subscribe to the channel. You don't got to agree with everything I say. All you got to do is do what I do and love the sport of boxing. Tough Club Boxing, we out. You ain't got to go home, but you got to get the hell up out of here.